The Fukushima catastrophe is probably the worst nuclear disaster in, in human history. It's certainly worse than Chernobyl. Cleaning up contamination from the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant is a bigger task than anyone expected. The head of the firm that owns the plant laid out his new plan to get on top of the job. Tokyo Electric's president, Naomi Hirose, visited Environment Minister Hiroyuki Nagahama. He described his plan to increase the number of decontamination workers threefold to 300. We're going to need a bigger boat. We want to get advice from ministry officials then dispatch experts on civil engineering and radioactivity. We want to do a good job. The minister said he wants workers to, do more pro to be more proactive so they can make the region safe as soon as possible. You know, the, the, the independent scientists say there's a problem and the government and the nuclear scientists say there's no problem. Debris from the tsunami that hit Japan last year is drifting across the Pacific. Japanese government officials say much of that debris could start washing ashore in North America next month. An estimated one and a half million tons of wreckage is floating toward the United States and Canada. A few items have already turned up on the coastline. Scientists at Kyoto University are analyzing the debris' movements. They say 33,000 tons of material from wrecked houses may wash ashore in North America by June. They say fishing boats, buoys and other items that catch the wind are drifting toward the Philippines and could be there by February. Officials at the Environment Ministry have given the predictions to officials in the United States and Canada. The Japanese government are trucking radioactive material from the Fukushima disaster area where it's contaminated all over Japan. And even as far south as the south of Japan, we're now getting reports of, of uh, radioactivity, uh, radioactive material being taken all the way to the south of Japan to be burned. Now what possible reason could there be for burning it as far away as that? I'll tell you the reason. It's really quite sinister and horrifying. The reason is this that eventually when these children start to die from leukemia, from other cancers, from heart disease, from whatever, their parents are going to want to go into court. They're going to want to sue the Japanese government and they're going to want to have to say these, in order to do that these children were contaminated and that's why they've got high levels of cancer. But of course the only way that they can say that they've got high levels of cancer is to have a control group in an area that's not contaminated. For example, the south of Japan. So I believe that the project to take this material and burn it all over Japan is to destroy all of Japan, is to increase the, the, the cancer rate in the whole of Japan so that there will be no control group to which you can compare these children in the Fukushima area. So that's that point. The contamination from Fukushima has gone as far south as Tokyo. So we can conclude without any doubt that that area up to 200 kilometers, maybe more, away from the catastrophe, catastrophe site has been seriously contaminated with radionuclides. It's not as if this is something new. We know what's going to happen. We absolutely know what's going to happen. We have looked very closely at the health effects of people who were exposed to these same radionuclides after the Chernobyl accident in the same quantities. Not as many people, I have to say, which is why Fukushima is a worse disaster the International Atomic Energy Agency says it will resume talks in December with Iranian officials in Tehran for the first time in about four months. The IAA made the announcement on Friday. The agency is demanding that Iran allow UN inspectors access to the country's military facility in the outskirts of Tehran to verify Iran's suspected nuclear weapons development program. Since January this year, the IAEA has had six meetings with Iran's government to discuss verification methods. Diplomatic sources say the agency's mission is likely to be led by its chief nuclear inspector, Deputy Director General Herman Nakats. The IAEA is asking Iran to allow it multiple access to the facility, but the Iranians are insisting that on-site inspection will be allowed only once. It's unclear whether the upcoming talks can narrow the differences between the two sides.